And now let's start with the options with which I'm most familiar and I have tried them multiple times to prank my friends or do things like that. So the first option in input is show touches. So this is very normal. As you can see, there is a white dot which is shown if you enable this option. And this is very good if you use any recording application to record your screen or project your screen on something, then you can simply enable this option and it will show your touch or wherever you're touching. And the next is pointer location and the first option used to show a circle with white dot. So this will show X and Y axis. So the next list of options are categorized in drawing. First option is show surface updates. And this is the option which I have used to prank my friends. And if your friend do not know about develop options, then simply you take their Android phone, enable develop options and enable this option and simply put the device back as if you have not done anything. And whenever you just scroll up or scroll down or do anything with your phone, which is consuming your CPU or it is running in the background, then the screen will turn pinkish. As you can see, if I just scroll up and down, the screen will turn pinkish or I don't know if we are allowed to change the color, but the screen turns pinkish. And if your friend do not know about develop options, then simply you enable this option and give them their phone and say that the display has gone wrong now. And I'm telling you to do this prank on your friends because my friends did this prank with me two to three years back. So, and this option is present in most of the Android versions. So thumbs up and go ahead and prank your friends. And the next option is show layout bounds and it will show the margins for every option. Like as you can see for show layout bounds, this much rectangular space is used or for the complete show layout bounds this much rectangular space is used so all the options like that are shown over here and this can be very very useful for different applications like if you want some part of your application to be exactly symmetrical then you can enable this option and you can see different things with this application and the next option is force rtl layout direction rtl stands for right to left so simply enable this option and everything will be turned from right to left right to left left to right right to left Disable this option and everything will go back to normal and now the next three options are very very interesting and I use them a lot on different devices. So let's assume you have a device which has like octa core processor or quad core processor but sadly it has touchwiz or it has some UI that is not running or that doesn't seem to be running very fast then simply turn all the animation scale to 0.5x and you will quickly notice the difference that the device feels very fast because all the animation scales will be reduced to 0.5x and because of this the device will feel little smoother it won't affect your performance in whatsoever way it's just that the animation scale will be reduced so the next option is simulate secondary displays and if we just enable these options then as you can see it will simulate a secondary display on your android screen only so that's surely very very good feature to have and uh, this feature is very very unknown and I have not seen a single person using this option on their device but if you have a tablet with a larger screen then you can simply have this option enable I don't know why will people use this but for developers it is very very useful as these are developer options I can say this for all options so yeah let's switch to next options and these options are hardware accelerated rendering so the first option is force GPU rendering. So this option forces software to use the GPU for most applications rather than using the CPU. This reduces the clock speed of CPU up to some level because as the GPU is used in most of the applications or to run the applications, CPU is not used that much. So because of which the clock speed of the CPU can be reduced a little bit and it can save you a little bit of battery. But there is a trick over here. But nowadays the GPUs are good enough. So turning this on will surely result in better performance smoothness. But if you have any older device, like if you have a two year old device or three year old device, then turning this on may result in more battery consumption than it would have been without this because some GPU consume more battery than the CPU. And this can be very problematic if you enable this option in your older device, which is two or three years old. So the next option is show hardware layers update and simply enable this option. And as you can see, it, it says flash hardware layers green when they update. So as you can see, as we go in the menu, 
the layout is updated so that's why it flashes green screen so as you can see the screen once again so because of this you can always come to know whenever the layers are updated on your device and this is very very important for developers too because android applications running with hardware acceleration turned on can greatly benefit from using hardware layers because a view which is backed by a hardware layer can be rendered in very efficient manner so this option is just to show you that the layers are updated so the widget on the screen or application should use only required layer in order to optimize performance so if you have a widget on your home screen and if you have enabled this option then only the widget part of the home screen should be flashed with green thing not the whole screen should be flashed with the green screen because if you have a short widget and if the complete home screen is being flashed with the green screen then that's surely a bad widget and you should disable that widget and by using this you can come to know about different applications performance too and this option is very very good for developers too uh, for the developers who want their application to run very very smoothly and it, they want it to be very snappy uh, they can simply enable this option test the application so all the best to the developers who are using this option to do the betterment of the application so the next option is debug gpu overdraw so you can select show overdraw areas or you can select the third option which is hard to pronounce so i won't pronounce that but i'll just tell you why this application is very very useful for developers who are developing different apps too because this is where you can make out why any particular app is not working smoothly so as i said by enabling the hardware layer update you can see if the application is performing very very smoothly or not and by enabling debug gpu overdraw you can come to know about the performance of the app too so if there is no color present on the screen then it is like no overdraw if blue color is present then it is like 1x overdraw green is for 2x light red is for 3x and dark red is for 4x overdraw and if your application is running in completely red screen then surely the application is not very very optimized for the device and the application surely surely needs tweaking and by using this option we can surely make out performance of the applications like facebook twitter or different social media applications which are used by people on regular basis and you can simply check your app's performance on your phone like if you have two different phones like oneplus 1 and galaxy s6 then you can simply enable this option on both the phones run the same application on both the phones and if one of the phone has blue that means it is having 1x overdraw and another one is having green that means 2x overdraw so surely the phone which is having the 2x overdraw that is the green color that phone is not optimized that well for the application or the application is not optimized that well for the phone so it can be vice versa obviously so yeah that was for the debug gpu overdraw yeah these options are so much helpful for developers so i'm pretty happy for the developer options so the next option is Force 4x MSAA. So if you have a high-end phone or tablet or phablet, so then to get great 3D graphics, just turn this option on. This will force Android to use 4x multi-sample anti-aliasing in OpenGL ES 2.0 games and other applications. But for this to show effect on your device, you need to have a very powerful phone and you need to have an app which is supported by OpenGL ES 2.0. If your app or if your game the is not supported with this then there will not be any major changes if you enable this option this requires more graphics power and will probably drain your battery a bit faster but it will surely improve the image quality in high end games this option is like the force enabling anti aliasing in the nvidia control panel in windows pcs so it's not completely nvidia in our phones yet but you can be happy with this option and you can simply tell your friends that you have enabled anti aliasing in your phone and i'm pretty much sure that they will be shocked because i'm pretty much sure that no one knows about this option. and the next option is simulate color space and i'm pretty much confused about this option so uh, just focus on developer options and on and i'll just enable the first option which says monochromacy and the colors will be changed immediately and if i just disable it the colors will be different but if i enable the options which says blue yellow uh, nothing happens actually nothing turns in blue and yellow so that's disappointing and the next option is for media uh, for all those media consumers over there so the first option is use awesome player and by you enabling this you can enable different codecs if you simply use the stock gallery application to play videos or things like that but if you have mx player or vlc media player then i don't think so that you need to enable this option for different codecs because mx player and vlc media player will automatically have the codecs inbuilt so no worries about that but 
a new player was something which was present in 5.0.2 i remember that very well and in 5.1.1 the new player was gone from develop options as it was moved shifted to main android and awesome player it's still in develop options as it is still in developer phase so yeah do keep that in mind and the next option is disable usb audio routing so it automatically disables the routing to usb audio peripherals let's assume that you are playing a song on your device and if you plug any speaker to your phone by using the usb cable then it will not completely shift the audio of your phone to the speaker immediately you will need to disable this option to get the audio working on the speaker so this is surely a very good thing for people who listen to some very very good songs and they do not want their friends to hear it if you mistakenly connect it to your speaker so the next list of options comes under monitoring so the first option is strict mode enable so simply enable this option and go into some application and if any application takes a very very long time to open up then this will flash screen it's not flashing screen on my device because my device is like little high end and it's running smoothly so it's not showing on my device but if your device is like low end device or if your device is not performing that well then you can simply enable this option and you can check your device's performance and you can make out where the phone is not working smoothly if your phone is not working smoothly on home screen or if your phone is not working in settings menu or facebook application or something like that then you can simply enable this option and you can check for those options then the next option is show cpu usage and i guess i don't need to say anything because it started showing the cpu usage already all the best for you if you are going to read all those options so and the next option is profile gpu rendering uh, so let's select on screen as bars and you must be knowing that with android lollipop all the applications rather full android is supposed to run at 60 fps so the green screen is for 60 fps you can say and if any of the application crosses that line then that application is surely not good for the android and i have seen the dialer application which is very very faulty which always goes above the green line even the drive application by google is not very very good and another way to get it is in adb shell but i do not want to get it in adb shell because on screen as bars is like very very good to have so the next list of options is for apps and the first option is the don't keep activities option it will destroy every activity as soon as the user leaves it so let's assume you have a device which is sadly having 512 mb of ram then it's recommended for you to enable this option but it's not recommended to if you open the same application multiple times so i'll tell you how this works so let's assume you opened facebook application but you pressed home button and you left the application so if you have not enable this option then the application will be running in the background but if you enable this option then as soon as you leave the application it will be destroyed immediately so that's surely a very good thing because it will not consume any ram in the background and the next option is background process limit and yeah you as you can as you can tell by the name only background process limit so as you can see i have running multiple applications in the background right now but if i want only maximum of four processes running in the background then you can simply enable this option and only four processes will be ran in the background and not major applications will be ran in the background so that's surely a very good thing and personally i did not use these options but if you are using these options for um, a very long time then do let me know about that in the comment section below and how was your experience do let me know about that too and finally the last option is show all ans ans stands for apps not responding and that's very very frustrating so there can be multiple apps in the background which are not responding right now but your device is working on them to get them working so by enabling this option it will show you all the applications which are not responding properly to your device or to your system enabling this option won't harm your device in any way so do not worry about that so yeah this is it for the developer options video guys thank you for watching I hope you learned many things in these videos and if you want me to do more Android explained videos and if you are interested in such videos then do let me know about that in the comment section below and don't forget to give this video a huge like because I don't think so that anyone did any video on develop options on YouTube or even if they did they did not explain in this detail and that is why I had to make this video so yeah 
Anyways, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already for more awesome content related to Android. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching.